Hi there, namaste, and welcome back to another spiritualistic pick a card reading. Today we're taking a look at how you can best be of service to others. So please take a deep breath, drawing the energy of your spine, creating a clear and open channel. And as you exhale, allow yourself to come into clear knowing which group or groups has your message in it for you today. We have group number one on the left in the thumbnail with removal of obstacles. Group number two with the follow your heart card. And group number three with the source energy card. As always, the timestamps to your readings are listed below in the description box as well as all the rest of my personal information, such as if you seek private readings, tarot or astrology, Reiki or miscellaneous energy work sessions, as well as spiritual development tools, such as my tarot and oracle decks, journals, books, crystals, you name it. So thank you so much for being here today. If you're interested in more exclusive content, You'll also be able to find that in the description box where you'll find the link to my members only YouTube channel as well as my Patreon and the rest of my social media links if you want to stay connected that way too. So thank you so much for being here. I'll see you at your reading and namaste. Hi there group one, namaste and welcome to your reading. Today we are taking a look at how you can best be of service to others and you selected the first group with the removal of obstacles card. Now. This energy reminds me of Ganesha, Ganesh, which is represented oftentimes by an elephant, the removal of obstacles. The first message that's coming through here tapping in with your energy is that you can best be of service to others by allowing yourself to receive more. This might seem a little bit of a contraindicative energy for you, specifically because this is how you can show up best for others. And so, when you think about giving back, we often think about actions, we often think about what we can do, but sometimes, I'm being shown, you can, and I'm using my clairvoyance and I'm trying to translate it into words, you can receive resources that will help you assist others, but if you are so focused on giving and doing, then the resources that will be able to come to you, that will bless you, and also through you bless others, these energies are trying to come through, so if you allow these through, this will help you to best serve others as well. With the removal of obstacles card, there seem to be some things that have been occurring behind the scenes or that occur behind the scenes, usually for most people, that you have access to seeing, to remembering. Some of you have prophetic dreams, some of you are oracles yourself, others of you are really, really strong energetically, whether or not you resonate with being overtly spiritual or working in this field. You can best be of service to others by allowing yourself to see where you might be spreading yourself thin a little bit and allowing yourself to receive so that you can then give more focused, specified care to those who need it the most in ways that might be a little bit more specified to your skill set as well as what is needed from you. So there seems to be something where you have a very specific key to a very specific lock and you might be a master locksmith. So you might be able to open any door at all whatsoever but there seems to be a specific key that you have access to, to a specific lock that only you can open. And so with this being the case, allowing yourself to receive the resources needed for you not to need to be the master locksmith, not that you can't have that skill or act in that way, but where you are refining, you are receiving more so that you can refine the actions that you take. This will allow you to make 
larger changes to the world around you, this is really, really feeling like making systemic change. It's feeling like building homes and schools and feeding people. And for some of you, this might be attracting a bigger audience. For some of you, this might be making a larger change. For some of you, this is starting a nonprofit or making something that has a larger, kind of more systemic effect here. And so because of this, there seems to be a dream that you have about the way that you can really move something, move a particular energy. But there seems to be this door in the middle that you have the capacity to find the key to. However, the resources needed to make this one key might be spent currently making 20 other keys. They're showing me an alchemist who is, say, turning iron into gold, just as an example. The amount of iron that it would take to make a mostly gold piece or 20 mostly gold pieces would be perhaps the same amount of iron that it would take in order to have this one solid goal, very specifically niched refined key that will unlock this door for you. And so you can utilize this analogy for maybe this has to do with your time. Maybe it has to do with your finances. Maybe it has to do with the people in your life. Maybe it just has to do with your energy. Either way, with the removal of obstacles card here, there is something here about you trusting in your unique one-of-a-kind gifts. The things that you know that you see that others don't. The things that you know for a fact you have not just access to, but you have tact. You have experience. You have the ability to move and shift and change things, and it aligns with your dream. So, the way that you can best serve others, first and foremost, group number one, it's to receive more, follow your dreams, and refine where you are putting your energy. I'm hearing for you, group one, you can best serve others by practicing that it's okay to have all or most of your eggs in one basket, for lack of a better term. I keep seeing the word obstetrician and the word ant. So those might be some very specific messages for just a couple of you, but it really wanted to come through before we moved along. So with that, let's get into this. So immediately I keep hearing the word refining as well. And we have queen of pentacles at the back of the deck. So one way that you can best serve others, death and rebirth. This is, I'm hearing creating systemic change through some of the things that you like to do. And the way this relates to refining. Clairvoyantly, I'm being shown someone who knows how to make salt from ocean water. They're showing me someone who knows how to purify water so that it's clean for drinking, learning how to, or someone who knows how to forage, someone who knows how to um, create shelters. And it doesn't have to be so survivalistic, I guess, either, but that's what is being shown to me. But there is something here that you can teach. There is something that is very specific, that is very, um, niche oriented almost that might be something that if you had sure if you had more time to go frolic around in the forest and pick dandelions then of course you would have an apothecary filled with one of the world's best antibiotics the original one the original anti-inflammatory right and this is not medical advice <laughs> by any means of course but um there's something like this um by Allowing yourself to have more time for yourself, you might end up frolicking in a field and you might end up collecting those dandelions and you might end up making a tincture out of them or um, using some of the herbs for holistic use and you might end up teaching others about the benefits of dandelions. However, it will require you to refine where you are putting your energy first. Some of you, you would love to take days to make some salt or many hours to make some salt and go to the beach and collect some salt, some seawater, things like this. However, um, there's this energy of, yes, but there's so much other things to do, so many other little ways to help. So there are energies here like 
teaching what you know. We have the Seven of Cups, the Three of Wands, and the Hanged Man coming out for you. So there's something here where it's finally time for you to begin investing and in making some of the choices that you want to make for yourself in your life. This is why the way that you can best serve others came out immediately as by serving yourself a bit more, by pulling back a little bit more, by honoring yourself a little bit more. Because the ways that you honor yourself, group number one, maybe you love playing with holistic skincare. Maybe you love finding Yehoba oil and almond seed oil and different extracts and kelp and beautiful ashwagandha and you're mixing them all together with some turmeric and you're making a beautiful face mask with aloe vera and shea butter, I don't know. <laughs> but this will end up being something that can help others. But if you are not ending up in that meadow collecting dandelions, if you are not um, letting yourself hone in your skills, finding your niche, if you are not taking care of yourself by practicing those reflexology points on your own hands and feet so that you can really understand the receiving of what it is you have to offer by yourself, through yourself, from yourself, for yourself, then you will inevitably be practicing something that you like and putting yourself in the shoes of those that you are meant to serve. Some of you, you really want to build a house, or you really want to build a van, or you really want to build um, a terrarium for your lizard out of a, an old vintage bookshelf, I don't know. And maybe you also really want to build houses for those who are in need of homes. Maybe you really want to build schools. Maybe you really want to um, make an impact. And so, while it might sound initially counterintuitive for you to take a few days off and go camping, you might take a few days off and go camping, but end up learning more things about perhaps foraging and um, nature and fire and purifying water and collecting resources and asking the earth what is it safe for you to take, what is allowed, not only by law, but by um, permission of Gaia, things like this. And it doesn't have to be so specific here. But some of you, for example, you are very gifted at energy work, but you are being called to utilize your gift on yourself. And in order to do this, you must be more comfortable receiving. And you will find the way that you do energy work that is the way that is the most you. Not only what is the most structured, tangible, um, like, way, not just what you see and can replicate, but the way that is yours, from your soul. It's very much like um, light language, the way that it is always inevitably very individualized. And that doesn't mean that there are not synchronicities. It simply means that to channel means to have a tap in. The way that you make salt from seawater might be the same way that someone else makes salt from seawater. That your process, the tips and tricks that help you along the way, the things that you use your salt for are going to be different. I'm hearing this song from, is it um, Godspell? You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Um, you are the light of the world, I think is the song. Anyway, let's see how else you can best serve others. Group number one. It looks like giving yourself more of a choice in the way that you move forward in not just in your future and your day-to-day -day life in both. And there's also an energy here. We have seven and three. Seven can be your interpersonal relationships. Three can be your neighborhood. So for some of you, you can best serve others by... Um, Finding the people in your neighborhood, and we have 12 here, which is also a three, 733. We have this energy of finding people in your neighborhood who are masters of things that you can create a tool belt with. For example, maybe you are, um, maybe you all live at the beach. I was saying this because I live at the beach. Maybe you are the one who makes, um, maybe you are the one who makes salt out of seawater. But connecting with your neighbors, you might find somebody who 
knows how to sustainably and also in a clean antibacterial kind of way harvest kelp and maybe somebody else knows how to read the tides based upon the moon and maybe somebody else is um i'll just say a waterbender right <laughs> so these things together will actually end up helping you to better serve your community because you might end up they're showing me like bartering you offer some um some salt for some kelp <laughs> you offer some dandelions for some burdock root right so there are some things like this where you might be surprised to find out what is already around you masters of the crafts that are around you and this is less about um like networking and bartering than it is about you letting yourself meander dilly dally take some of your hands out of a couple different tasks and kind of letting yourself say you know i've always really wanted to learn how to make paper out of egg cartons and then you find that there's someone who has been collecting the recyclables that are not able to be fully recycled at the facility near you and someone's like i don't know what to do with all these egg cans so then maybe you take all the egg cartons and you end up making paper and it's, it's things like this like there's this interconnected energy they're showing me um mycelium they're showing me neuroplasticity they're showing me like a microcosm a macrocosm your community letting yourself be a part of like if you look at it like a mycelium like you and your community the way that these things are all interconnected and the different masters of crafts around you i recently um <laughs> yeah you'll never know who is connected to the things that you're connected to but from their own perspective and it might not necessarily be that they are a forager it might be that they are not a gatherer, but that they are an artist. It might not necessarily be that they are spiritual, but it might be that they are very um, in tune with the flow of nature. And it's kind of this energy where this, this and that coexist because the central point is that niche key that you have and that niche key that someone else has and putting them all together. So, but then again, this goes back to, we have Knight of Swords, Six of Pentacles, Two of Swords, reciprocity, moving forward, giving yourself more freedom in your day-to-day -day life and moving forward. What is it that you want to do next week? Well, maybe, sure, Colleen, it would be lovely to go camping and go get to forage and um, go out with my local mycological society and go harvest some mushrooms. I would love to do that, but someone's got to work, right? So there's this energy like this of allowing yourself not to, you know, blow off your tasks, but you can best serve others by actually letting yourself express some of the things that you want to do and have maybe been putting on the back burner a little bit because specifically this is about reciprocity for you this is about finding um like a a way that you can receive your craft in a way that also while you are receiving your craft you will end up connecting with others who are doing the same thing and while you are doing this you will then get to serve others better because then you will become a master at collecting salt you will then become a master at utilizing dandelions in lieu of ibuprofen you will then become a master of um foraging mushrooms so you know for a fact hey that might look right it might be in the right place but it's the wrong season for that one things like this refining your craft and meeting other people who maybe you're looking for dandelions and someone else is looking for mushrooms and maybe you get to put together a thing right and this can help serve others so whoa closing out grounding what you want we have the star what fell on the floor here it's the ace of swords here grounding what you want as your truth not just what you think is needed of you because this is going to be something that you think you have to offer it's really fun for you but it might not be needed and this is what stresses you out okay there's this energy here i say stresses you out because we have the nine of swords we have this energy of what what there is a demand for versus what you think and, and what you think is needed of you versus what it is that you are called to do and you're being called to recognize that these things are congruent they are, may not be one and the same but they are congruent together so making sure that you are giving yourself permission to slowly let go of some of the things that are in demand of you specifically and allowing yourself to make more time for yourself and your hobbies these things will be the way that you end up best serving others these will actually become the things that you are able to harness and create systemic change with however if you are not having time for these things 
first. If you are not aware of what it is like to receive these things from yourself first, then it will continue being a later thing. And so the best way that you can serve others is to allow yourself to receive more because you have something that nobody else does. You have an interest that nobody else does. You have a skill set or an ability to teach something that is unique and special to you. And it's also something that lights you up. But it might not be what is in demand of you right now. That doesn't mean that it's not in demand. It actually, I'm getting, is in some way, shape, or form so much in demand that it will end up creating that huge change serving in that huge way like <laughs> serving others like serving like obviously but <laughs> serving others <laughs> in such a huge way that you will feel like you are liberating others this is you can teach someone to fish or you can give them fish this is but if you are not out there fishing then how will you teach others to fish if you are not um collecting salt out of seawater, then how will you teach others to do so? You might know it, you might like it, but if you are not out there doing it, then you're not going to be refining your craft and then you won't be out there being seen and connecting with other people who might have interests who might have interests that are similar to yours or the same one or just think that it's really cool that you're doing that and you should meet their friend George who's in Florida. I don't know, random things like this. And so there's kind of this whole like I guess psyop there's this whole rabbit hole this whole beautiful blossom that wants to get unfolded here and so the best way that you will and can end up serving others is actually through some of those niche interests that you have that might not necessarily be the smart thing right now it might take the investment of your time of your energy of your money of resources in some way shape or form however the removal of obstacles card is saying that the path is now cleared for you to do this. Your dreams are the thing that is going to be the key towards not only your success, but also towards helping others because you have a special tact. You have a special knack. Knack. <laughs> you have a special I am here energy about this because it's what you're passionate about. And because of this, it will help you move mountains creating huge change and helping you to serve others the best. So all of this to say, group number one, that something that you feel as though you've been putting off or you should put off or you would have to think about it if you were going to do it, you beginning this will actually put you down the path where you can serve others the most, the biggest and will also be one that helps you relieve stress from others systemically, which is a big deal. So group one, this is how you can best serve others. I hope this helps shed love, light, and clarity for you. And as always, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, week, month, year, and incarnation in this beautiful magical realm. I'm so grateful that you're here. I hope to see you next time and namaste. Hi there, group two. Namaste and welcome to your reading. Today we're taking a look at how you can best serve others. And you selected the second group with the follow your heart card. This is the like deck card for my follow your heart oracle deck, which is why it's so spiritualistic on it. Tapping in with the energy here. I'm getting that you can best serve others by progressing something forward. By taking something that you know will require a lot of determination or a lot of time mm, some of you this is something like starting starting a business starting a side hustle going back to school it's something like going for that higher level degree for some of you it's going back to something that you started and maybe needed to put aside for a while going back to it might take a lot of energy it might take a lot of effort it might take a lot of determination it might be a little bit painful there's something here with the follow your heart card there is something that you your soul wants to express through you this blue is really standing out to me here 
There's something that your soul really wants to express through you that will help you best serve others. Now, it's interesting that it's coming out in this way because I'm getting the message that if you knew that you were doing this for others instead of for yourself, it would be it, you would be more inclined to carry it forward. But if you were doing this for yourself, it might almost not be worth it for you, like mentally and emotionally. You can best serve others by listening to your heart. There seems to be something here where you have walked through the low vibrational expression of a particular energy and there's like a piece of your heart that's still in there and the reason is because you're meant to come back around to it not quite because you're meant to have ascended this low vibration to have taken this vibration to a higher state which you have and then express once more whatever this is through that high vibration through that vibration again but this in some way shape or form requires dismantling a pattern that you've walked through in some sort of a painful way in some sort of a difficult way say you really love to paint but you broke your hand so now you don't paint anymore if you knew that you could serve others by painting you might be more inclined to go to your physical therapy. You might be more inclined to try to draw that straight line anyway. But if it was just for yourself, you might not push through that difficult part. You would not necessarily maybe work through those patterns of pain and work on, um, work on those little corners of wherever it's hurting. They're showing me arthritis specifically. What was I reading yesterday that said it was good for arthritis? Sea moss. Um, my guide just told me to keep that in. Normally I would cut it out, so okay. How you can best serve others, group number two. It is to follow your heart and not to fear walking through a pain pattern one more time because it will lead you and others, it will lead you to liberation and that liberation will help you serve others your best in your way. I'm hearing the song Shallow, you know, in the shallow, la 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 that one. I'm also hearing the song I Will Follow You by Bring Me the Horizon. There's something here that seems like it's a joke. My shoulders are like glued to my ears right now. What's going on? This is about the heart space, expressing something in the heart space, expressing something. Some of you, you can best serve others by standing up for yourself. Some of you, you can best serve others by um like there's so, if there's someone where you kind of want to be like hey like cut it out if you want to stand your ground if you want to do something again if there's something that you want to express through your heart space but you feel like oh i better not there's a boundary you really want to set or there's someone where you really want to it's pushing you through that vibe you really want to paint but your hand hurts there's something where if you knew that standing up to that person was going to help others in the long run, would you stand up to that person? It's not just, uh, are you keeping your peace and you're swallowing it and you can deal with it on your own later and process it in talk therapy or something like this. It's not this. This is expressing your heart. This is something like walking through that pain pattern again. This is something like telling that person to insert swear word. This is, um, I'm not telling you to disrespect anybody, of course, but how you can best serve others is by asserting that boundary. How you can best serve others is by um, going after that that craft again. After, the way you can serve others is going back to that place that was once really special to your heart, but now it holds a painful memory. There's something here about, they're showing me the star card, like dipping light into something. It's like seeding light into a vibration because you are no longer there. You've grown through that. And so that energy wants to re merge with that original energy, that original task, that original wound, so that it can fully like transmute, sublimate. Now, let's take a look at your tarot to see how we can use this to serve others. Group two, 
you can best serve others because this is going to create a ripple effect. A ripple effect. You might not realize this, but you setting this boundary to that one person who's really frustrating you, you're not the only person who's getting bothered by them. You will create a ripple effect. You painting that thing that you keep seeing, but it might hurt you to paint it, will not only strengthen you and allow you to do what you love, but that painting might go down in history and it might end up in the artist books. They're showing me that case of um, Pepsi versus that kid who is trying to get a, a fighter jet <laughs> um, because they didn't put the legal disclaimer in the United States on the commercial where you could use the Pepsi points to buy merch and things like that. Now, they study that case in law school. That kid never got his jet. But now, that is a classic case that people use in law school. They're showing me situations like this. This is something where you can best serve others by almost saying like, screw it, I'm gonna do it a little bit. And they're showing me specifically this peacock ore that I have on my desk. So this crystal might be significant to you as well, okay? Let's see, how can group number two best serve others. How can group number two best serve others? This is the, this is my follow your heart oracle, as you know, and this is the tarot of the little prince. I'm here not to take those. How can group number two best serve others? How can group number two best serve others? You're showing me the peacock or to peacock yourself. Okay, peacock yourself. Put yourself out there. Don't be afraid, okay? If you're waiting for your friend to go to the pottery class with you, go to the pottery class by yourself. If you want to paint, but you're waiting for your hand not to hurt anymore, your hand's not going to hurt anymore because you are starting to paint, not because you're waiting. Um, if you are waiting for somebody to be respectful for you, be, um, to be more respectful or to leave before you um, hang out with that friend group again, go hang out with the friend group until that person to respect your boundaries, you and your friends. Okay, we have Knight of Pentacles here. This is asserting your foundation and not a, like, not aggressive. It's not like, hey man, like, like this, <laughs> this is Knight of Pentacles. This is astute. This is, we're all adults here. So when I say that you're overstepping my boundaries, I'm aware that you know that that is what I mean. And so please behave accordingly. Thank you, have a great day. Something like this. This is, um, I'm just hearing the word astute. The magician fell on the floor. Okay, grounding something that you're a master of. Grounding something that you're a master of. However, Knight of Pentacles is going to be slow and steady. It's going to be painting even though you have arthritis in your wrist. Maybe not arthritis, okay? But it's going to be Five of Cups, the Hierophant. Something that you let go of that you thought was going to be permanent. For some of you, this is giving that relationship one more chance, but you end up building something together that can help serve others. This is something that is you approaching that problem, that invention, that um, unsolvable math proof that you set aside for a while, um, that theorem you're trying to put together, giving it one last go and realizing that that thing that you put aside for later later is now and you needed to be this version of you in order to like conquer that version of you's problems okay it's kind of also giving repeating that pain pattern again going back to that place that you said i'm never going back there i can never i'm never stepping foot in there again letting yourself go back to that because you're not the version of you that experienced that that walked through that you are the grown matured version of you so how is this serving others with the wheel when you choose this, if you choose this, things will start working in your favor. They will start working in your favor so much so that people are going to ask, I'll have what group two is having. Is there something in the air wherever group two goes? What's in the water group two is drinking? Six of swords. You're going to show someone, show people, show something that the impossible is possible. I'm hearing radical healing. Yeah, some of you, you've been working on coding something. You've been working on a, a mathematical theorem. You've been working on an invention. You've been working on something that shouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't be possible. Yet it is. And you know that it is. And you're following your heart. But in order for you to have one more go at this, or in order for you to um, present it to the public, or in order for you to carry forward with this, I'm hearing, carry on. Shout out to all the punk pop music that's coming out in this reading. Yes, okay. 
there, <laughs> there is um there's this energy here of death and rebirth you rebirthing yourself i'm gonna raise you like a phoenix yeah okay there's definitely this phoenix energy that's coming through from you but the phoenix must go through the fire and flames oh my god music is really coming out some of you maybe you have um you are a musician but you're like i can't play like i used to be really good but now i suck and it might be something where um i promise you don't suck okay because all music is good music even if you are out of key out of tune uh you're missing a couple strings on your guitar okay this is something where maybe you used to be really good at something and you stopped practicing so now you're a little rusty so now your perspective of bad is different because you're not where you once were okay again it's like, like this painter analogy that's coming out this i'm never going to go back to that place again i can't pick up my guitar it's hard i can't do something you can do that thing and this is actually how you can best serve others because maybe you're not just a guitar player maybe you are a sound healer and a guitar player so maybe you ditched the guitar for the singing bowls but maybe there's something there where this invention something that should be impossible utilizing the guitar for music therapy instead of just traditional sound healing or music therapy like they teach in school there's something about the intersection of these things but it will require you to re to take this matured version of you and walk it through a pain pattern one more time to uplift it so that it can be provided as an offering to those who came before you and those who will come after you so some of you have experienced radical healing or are working on rad radical healing of something that should be impossible. Some of you, again, you're working on a, an invention, on a mathematical theorem, on coding a particular program. There is something here where if you can just get that code just right, if you can figure out um, the function behind this equation, then you will be able to, we have the devil and death and rebirth with the eight of wands, you will be able to change the world. If you can get this invention to work, this is going to change the way something happens. This is innovation. This is innovation, but it's going to require you to look at the own journey of you innovating yourself. And the key will be in that pattern. The key will be in the pattern that you utilize in order to innovate yourself in a way where you can take your story and you can rationalize it you can objectify it you can take it from a subjective story a little less of you can take it from i'm hearing take it from an histoire and turn it into a history which is like a play on words so some of you this might be um like a play on words too some of you might be seeing a certain word seeing a certain word and maybe like the numerological coding of that word is the code that you seek for your your program something like this that's a little bit um specific we have the eight of wands and the ten of cups coming out for you there's something that you are a master of that you can ground but it's going to require you to go there it's going to require you to, to go there not to lower your vibration but to go somewhere where you you thought you would never go again you told yourself you would never go again you something like this this will help serve others the best because you will show others not only that this is possible but that if you dare to go there the wheel turns in your favor. That Four of Swords, healing is possible. The Four of Swords can turn into the Emperor. And what happens? The wheel and the Six of Swords. Uncertainty, that, that faith, that uncertainty, but that decision to move forward anyway. It's kind of giving, um, no, one has, no one has crossed that river before, but someone decided to try. No one has, it's giving like innovation. It's giving exploring. It's giving radical healing. It's giving, um, being the first one to do something ever. But it wasn't always like this. There's a story there. And the story there is the key. It's the pattern that you seek. And so the way that you can best serve others is to follow your heart. It is to go there with yourself. And it is to allow yourself to get changed like a remix so you can get raised like a phoenix. That is a Fall Out Boy <laughs> song. <laughs> Music is coming out a lot, especially with the Eight of Wands, the Ten of Cups. This is letting yourself be happy wanting the things that you want and trusting that the, the cycle, the pattern, the lesson that you learned that was attached to that, the thing that caused you the hurt and the burden behind wanting the things that you want, the reason why something ended up getting put on a shelf, the reason why something ended up um, being saved for later, or that's a different version of you, or that was in another lifetime completely, that 
rebirthing that because you have passion for it still. Looking at the way that you healed that and applying that maturity, that pattern, that grid, that framework into whatever it is that you are desiring will allow you to innovate and find the fulfillment and the end of the road that will help you create something that will create a shift or a change. You will turn the impossible possible and that is how you can best serve others but it will require you to go there. You will also be able to best serve others by allowing yourself, okay, this part's important, to share specifically when you got spun for a loop, to share specifically the difficulties, the burdens, the challenges, the stuff that you had to let go of, the devilish energies you were tied to, the things that you restricted from yourself, the determination you needed to have, the actual legitimate level and amount and determination, the work that needed to go into it, the times that you you slipped and you fell and you ate it completely and you got back up and you tried again, sharing all of that. Vulnerability. I'm hearing vulnerable by Selena Gomez. Vulnerability. Diving into your biggest vulnerability and your deepest passion and sharing that. Sharing that. Expressing that writing about it, making a course on it, sharing it. How you made the impossible possible, but being vulnerable about the fact that it once was impossible and it was impossible to you too, until you cracked the code. That is how you can best serve others. Group number two, I hope this helps shed love, light, and clarity for you. And as always, I'm sending you all my love, light, and gratitude. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, week, month, year, and incarnation in this beautiful magical realm. And I hope to see you next time. I love you. Thank you for being here. And namaste. Hi there, group three. Namaste. And welcome to your reading. Today we are taking a look at how you can best serve others. And you selected the third group with the source energy card. The first thing that I'm hearing specifically is where you source your energy from is coming through. Maybe some of you are really good at organization or you're really good at investing your energy specifically. Maybe some of you have a morning routine or a nighttime routine or certain biohacks that really help you. Now, of course, with the source energy card, this might for a lot of you have to do with spirituality. It might have to do with energy work. It might have to do with connecting with source. And so another way that you can serve others is actually going to be by helping yourself and well, helping others get to where you are by making them feel included in a community, being honest about where you are, but also being honest about like the good, the bad, the ugly, what you're working on. This is very much a collective kind of communal energy here that's coming forward. Is that a duck? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was hearing a duck flying up, up there. That never happens. Um, ducks can be significant for you. But there's, oh, I'm hearing the ugly duckling, like there's something like this. Sharing your story, sharing your, um, I'm hearing your origin story, but also I'm really getting the sense of community, like we're all in this together, like let's all together do a retreat where all of us are meditating or all of us are channeling. Maybe it's, hey, work out with me for 30 days, we're all doing it together. The way that you can best serve others is by creating some sort of community that honors where you are. You know, you're, say you're leading a fitness class and you're doing squats and you're like, yeah, I'm feeling the burn too. I know this is not fun, but you know, you do one more, one more, we got this. And you're doing it with them. So you're able to see that they're burning. They're able to see that you're burning. There's this energy like this here specifically, but also where are you getting your energy from? Maybe you are sharing your inhalation and exhalation practices with them. You're like, deep breath and think about what you're going to eat for dinner later and then they're like yeah i can really do that last squat <laughs> something like this and it doesn't have to be fitness oriented of course this is just what spirit is showing me with my clairvoyance but there is really really an energy here where you are being urged to create some sort of community some of you you have been like i've been trying to now is the time there was some sort of halt here about going through a winter and the way that you were able to 
uh, either transmute this, get to where you are, and also honor what is still growing, what's still evolving. This has a lot to do with the transformational process, the integrational process, a lot less from, let me take you from A to Z using these three steps. This is, hey, we are all co-healing. We're all co-working. We're all co-breathing. We're all in this together, doing this together. Um, this has a lot about community, a lot about integration, a lot about um, where you are sourcing things from. For some of you, this is something like you can best serve others, like writing a uh, well-cited book that is a guide to something, sharing your resources. This is, this is where I learned this, and this is what I'm pulling this from. For example, say you are sharing information, sharing where you got that information so that others can read along with you, like an audiobook with the words so that people can listen to it and watch it at the same time. They can read and listen. This is all about um, like holding the hands of others and walking in stride with them in a way that's authentic with where you are, the highs, the lows, everything in between so, also. Group three, let's get into your tarot and we will see how you can best serve others. All right, how can group number three best serve others? Some of you are singers, or this is like writing, singing, writing, composing, things like this. I'm hearing a specific Ganesha mantra from Sam Garrett that I love. Um, it's Om Gam Ganapatai Namaha. Well, the song, not the mantra, <laughs> the song. Um, let's see. Oh, some of you, this might be something like maybe you do kirtan, or maybe you do praise music, or maybe you do singing bowls. Maybe you sharing this instead of doing the singing bowls for yourself. Maybe you go outside to your local park and you start doing the singing bowls. And then maybe you become the singing bowl person and you show up every Monday at 2 p.m. And then people start showing up at Monday at 2 p.m. and they all have an offering together. Maybe you have your private um, faith practice, your private spiritual practice, your private fitness practice, but instead you are sharing it. So you are recording that mantra that you're saying with yourself every day and you're able to serve others by sharing this. Maybe you have a workout regimen that you use for yourself every single day. You sharing this with others will allow you to step in stride with them and then also build a community and also serve others in this way. You have the Ace of Swords and the Knight of Swords. Look at this, both swords cards coming out initially. This is about finding what works for you, expressing this truth, and then moving forward with it, but not being the only one on this path. Some of you, this is like sharing your faith, sharing your faith practice. Maybe some of you have a, um, maybe some of you have a really like good prayer or they're showing me like, like Bible study circles. They're showing me book clubs. They're showing me prayer circles. And it doesn't have to be so uh, like dogmatically faith oriented, but they're showing me specifically. Um, like, this is like a workout regimen that really works for you or this is um, a mantra that really works for you this is putting together something like this where you can look at where you are look at where others are and then like work together in a sense of community so this can help you best serve others we have the tower at the back of the deck okay this might be something that changes the way that you are perceived or the way that you perceive yourself this is something where you might look at this and say well if i'm doing this between me and me between me and the universe between me and um, my four walls, sure, of course, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I know what I'm doing, I'm confident. But this might also be something where someone introduces, perhaps you take that thing that you're already doing every Tuesday anyway, and what if you lead a fitness class doing the same thing? It might immediately take you into, I'm not worthy, or shatter your um, sense of self, or bring up some imposter syndrome or something like this. Leading a Bible study. Maybe you are sitting there like, oh, why? Like, I, how could I do that? I just like to read. And it doesn't have to be Christian. It doesn't have to be, again, dogmatic. It can be something like Reiki circles. Maybe you are wanting to start Reiki circles. Maybe you are Reiki too. And so you're like, why would I do a Reiki circle? I'm not a Reiki master teacher, or I've only been a Reiki master teacher for a month, right? This can be something like you saying, hey, well, let's all do this together. It's the essence of community. You can best serve others by sharing what you're excited about, King of Wands. Um, and also letting yourself 
kind of ferociously go for it. Usually I get a, a bit of a more refined fire energy that's coming out here, but the King of Wands with Source, it's saying let that fire burn. Don't worry about it being a wildfire. It's going to end up um, like having a huge positive impact. It's like the fire of Source, the fire of light. It's, it's the sun, it's the medicinal benefits of the sun. It's things like this with Two of Cups, you being where you're meant to be, and it's something that you're already implementing in your life, Two of Pentacles. But when approached with the opportunity to publicize it or create or publish it or um, record it or write it down and share it or create a community out of it, this becomes something where it feels aligned, but there's a bit of a burden here for some reason. Five of Wands, High Priestess, but you know it's meant for you, Page of Pentacles, the Three of Swords. Because perhaps of the logistics behind it, because perhaps of a sense of self that's behind it because of course perhaps this would um change your life a little bit if you are leading a fitness class every tuesday at 2 p.m well whatever you're doing tuesdays at 2 p.m now you have to clear that off your schedule forever and that's a long longer term commitment so what are you doing like you have to organize things it's a tower moment however under the tower we have the seven of cups and the magician it's choosing for you to leverage yourself as a master of your craft but being both the teacher and the student to be not just the yoga teacher that's walking around aligning people which is a very helpful and necessary yoga teacher but it's rather to be that yoga teacher that is also holding chaturanga alongside your students for a minute long saying yeah this is hard is, i'm also struggling <laughs> it is bringing this energy into it um, not that one is better than the other, but it's kind of a more, um, we are all in this together energy. This is how you can best serve others. Now, it seems that there's some sort of start or false start or something here that's, that's presenting itself. So this might be something that you've tried and it didn't necessarily get off the ground. Maybe you were trying to build something so that others can have a space for what they like. Maybe you're trying to build something where you're trying to leverage yourself as the, um, the one who knows like the you're trying to leverage yourself as study the bible with me because i know the bible like something like this where it's either so that others can or so that you are leveraged as the um the, the authority power here this the way that this will come together now is alchemizing everything so that this is a we situation it's not a me and it's not a you it's an us it's a we are all doing this together this is not um I will choreograph the ballet steps and tell you what, you what they are and then you perform them for me and I give you corrections, um, which again is valid and helpful, but the way that you can best serve, it is by um, being in the center with everyone, also trying to do 32 fuetes and also struggling and being a human being and sometimes being amazing at it and sometimes falling flat on your face, <laughs> sometimes being behind the beat. It is this energy of authenticity being where you are but then also kind of being in a place where you neither the leader nor the follower you are rather the the connective point you are the vessel that connects everyone in the room you are the access point that connects all the spokes of the wheel a little bit less the um like yeah a little bit less the leader a little bit less the follower a little bit less the teacher a little bit less the student a little bit more um a a partner a little more a companion a little more a um friend an energy like this but building a community where this is the energy but again this does relate to sharing where you are how you got to where you are um also sharing the good and the bad i'm having a bad day today i'm having a great day today um, I'm having a bad day today, but I'm still on that reformer. <laughs> I'm having a, a wonderful day today, but I'm still asking God for forgiveness. I am, um, things like this. I am in a winter phase of my life, but we're still going to do the abundance mantra. Um, I feel like my guitar playing is a little bit rusty. Um, nod to group two a little bit. I feel like my guitar playing is a little bit rusty, but I'm still going to record these kirtan mantras and affirmations and sound healing anyway. So things like this, it's a little bit more um, community and a little bit less leading, but it is forming something. This is the, again, the, this is the fitness class where the person is burning with you. This is the 
um, guided meditation where they're meditating with you. This is, um, this is you putting yourself in a position of being the teacher that is the friend, not drawing a wall or a line between those things. So this is how you can best serve others. I'm getting here that you have a very, very strong connection to um, maybe to yourself to the divine, to source, to God, to the universe. You might be very spiritual, you might be very psychic, you might be very smart. Maybe you are the leading master in a particular field. Allowing yourself to be the leading master in the particular field and be holding hands with somebody saying, we are, we are here, I'm right here with you. That, it's that contact right there, it's that eye contact. It is you being spiritual and psychic and you saying, well, I've, you know it because you've walked through it before, so you're able to walk through it with them step by step by step. This is, um, this is this energy of letting yourself not just give what you needed to receive, but letting yourself be grounded where you are today, um, in your High Priestess and Empress energy, and also in your Tower Three of Swords energy. The way that it is, whenever it is, authentically, in that moment, um, but you're still showing up. This is leading by example, by holding their hand. You having a bad day and showing up anyway. You having a great day and showing up anyway. So that it's this community of transmutation. It's kind of like, say, one person's not motivated in the in the fitness class, but everyone else is motivated, they're having a great day. That one person who's less motivated, they're going to be more motivated by being in that energy. And even if you're leading the fitness class and you're less motivated and you show up and everyone's really excited to be there, they're all wagging their proverbial tails, they're having a great day, it will kind of feed this positive energy. It's like creating an energy conductor that has to do with where are you getting that energy? What is the fitness routine you're already doing? What is that prayer regimen you already have? What is that morning routine you're already doing? Hopping on a Zoom call every Monday morning at seven in the morning and you're all just sitting there doing your skincare together and you're talking about life. And it's a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, whether it's a good day or a bad day and you show up authentically, that is the way that you can best serve others. Some of you, this is going to have something to do with um, adding your personal playlist, not just the balance and meditation, Reiki, singing bowls playlist, it's adding your personal playlist. What do you listen to in the car on the way to the class and on the way home from the class? Adding that. Some of you, it is letting yourself sing. Some of you, it is um, letting yourself write or letting yourself read. Some of you, it is specifically sharing those resources, sharing that reference. What is the music that you're listening to right now? What are the books that you are reading right now? Um, creating that into a book club. Hey, I'm reading this book. Um, I wanted to share this with you guys. And then other people are picking it up. And then you're like, okay, well, it seems like we all are kind of forming a community here. What if we all read the next book together, stride and stride, and you have a book club now. You might be the one that is leading the book club, but you're all reading it together. You might be the one leading the fitness class, but you are all in that low squat, toughen it out together. <laughs> this is an energy like this where this is come as you are, give what you have, take what you need, um, safe space. And you might be the one that is the former of this, the creator of this. You might be the one that is the leader of this, but this does not exclude you from showing up authentically. It's kind of giving the energy of a therapist who shows up for their clients' meetings and they're sitting there with their notebook like, I'm gonna be so honest with you, today's been shit, but I'm still here for you. Let's get it, let's go, let's figure out life. And I'm not saying that that is professional or what people are taught to do in their psychological uh, leadership training or whatever, but it's kind of giving more of this grounded down to earth. And it's not just about, you know, the bad, it's also about the good, but it's about um, creating like this energetic conductor, creating this force that is greater than oneself, but you are the initiator of this energy by sharing, um, by sharing your song, by sharing your light language, by sharing your spiritual gifts, by sharing your Reiki, by sharing the books you're reading, by sharing the story you have to tell, by sharing your fitness regimen, by sharing your prayer regimen, by starting a Bible study because you're doing it anyway, whatever this is. I don't know why Bible study keeps coming out, that must be um, for somebody specifically. But it's back to the source energy. What is, what is the source of your energy? 
What is the source of others' energy? What is that source and where are you putting it? It's creating this energetic conductor. So group number three, that is how you can best serve others. I hope this helps shed love, light, and clarity for you. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, week, month, year, and incarnation in this beautiful magical realm. I love you with my whole heart. Thank you for being here and I love you. <laughs> I'll see you next time. And namaste.